Hi guys, I'm super happy you guys are back. My name is Isaac. I hope everyone's doing safe, staying healthy, and trying to stay busy with everything crazy that's going on. We're going to continue our series that's going to take us all the way up to the summer that's called How to Live a Superpowered Life. Now, what we're talking about is we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And you guys might know a lot about the Holy Spirit. You might know nothing about the Holy Spirit, or you could be in a little in between where you know a little bit, but not a whole lot. Hopefully this series will help you guys understand what the Holy Spirit is and what it does to our lives and our relationship with God. Now, since we're talking about a superpowered life, I don't know about you guys, but I think about superpowers. And there's lots of superpowers that you guys can have. And if you're anything like me, I've dreamed about what type of superpower I would want, what I would do with it, how I would use it, all that crazy stuff. So I want you guys to answer on the count of three, if you could have a superpower, what superpower would you guys want? One, two, three. All right. So for me, I would want like super speed. I think that would be a really cool superpower. And there's so many other superpowers, and I'm sure your superpower would be really awesome, and you could use it for a lot of good. Now, there's a lot of different kinds, and so I'm going to read a few, and I want you guys to see if you know what that would be and how you would use that. So for the first superpower, I'm going to talk about teleportation. Do you guys know what teleportation is? It's basically like you can go from one area to the other area without walking in between. So you could go from the back of the line to the front of the line with just the snap of your fingers. Would you want that superpower? Or another superpower could be invisibility. Do you guys know what invisibility is? That would be, you'd be like the best person for hide and seek ever. No one would ever be able to see you or find you. Ooh, here's another one. Do you guys know what telepathy is? That is where you can understand and read people's minds and know what they're thinking. That would be pretty crazy if you could just know what everyone's thinking around. I think that would be goods and bad to that. Um, there's levitation. So basically, you're just like floating everywhere. That would be pretty cool. You could just, if you were standing in line or something like that, you could just all of a sudden just levitate and sit down and just be fine. You wouldn't have to worry about that. Another awesome one would be like the force. Any of you guys know what the Force is with superpowers and everything? Star Wars? Any of Star Wars fans out there? It's a lot of cool superpowers that we can work with. And there's a lot of cool things, fun things to learn about. Now, it's kind of unlikely that we'll get any of these superpowers because they are fictional or they are make-believe. But they're really fun to think about. Now, the awesome part is, is the Holy Spirit is a superpower in itself and it can give us power. Now, the Holy Spirit might not give you power in the way that you can think of, like, what I said with super speed or, like, invisibility, but there's a lot of amazing things that have to do with the Holy Spirit. And so last week, we watched Bart and Andy, two of Jesus' disciples, talking about Jesus' death and resurrection and what he told them before he went to heaven. And we learned that Jesus promised to send a helper, and that helper was the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was going to be with them and help them after he was gone. Now, the Holy Spirit would comfort them and remind them of everything Jesus had taught them. And the Holy Spirit would give them power. And that's where our story picks up today. So let's see what Bart and Andy are talking about today. Hey, Andy! Andy, are you asleep? What? Are you asleep? I was. <laughs> I just can't believe it. What are you doing? Where, where are we? We're the same place we were when you started snoring, you big goof. Outside the upper room, on the bench, right here where the Holy Spirit came to us. You mean that wasn't a dream? No! Oh, that not. was amazing! Oh, it was awesome! It was stupendous! It was It was cool! Well, now we know what Jesus was talking about when he promised to send the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm just... I'm just so excited! Calm down, calm down! Okay, okay. Oh, I just can't help myself. 
Hey, Andy. What, Bart? Um, wasn't that the most amazing thing ever? Oh, God. We have seen some amazing things. I mean, Jesus walking on water, oh. Jesus feeding 5,000 people, Jesus being alive when we thought he was dead. But this, this was definitely one of them. Oh, yeah. Well, like this morning, we were, well, we were kind of all hiding. I know. We were afraid it. Didn't know what to do. Oh, and then the wind started blowing. And it was so loud. I had never heard anything that loud in my life. I mean, the wind was just going right through the house. Whoosh! Oh, I know, I know. Whoosh. But that wasn't the strangest thing. I looked out the window, and the trees weren't even blowing. It was perfectly calm. It was like the wind was just filling up only the house. That's because it wasn't an ordinary wind. It was the Holy Spirit. But that wasn't the strangest thing. What did you think when you saw the fire over Well, I wasn't afraid. Well, I wasn't either. Well, I saw flames on the top of your head that were like flickering like, like licking the sky. Yeah, and I saw a flame above your head, a ton licking fire, and it was flickering just like this above you. There was one above both of us, over all of us. It was the strangest thing I've ever, ever, ever seen. Well, I don't think you ever see it again either. Then something weird happened. It was like this fire started burning inside of my heart. Well, I know what you mean. I mean, not like a burning up kind of fire, but uh, more like, well, before my, my heart was kind of cold and dead and then it kind of fired up and came to life, full of life. Yeah, it was kind of like a fire that was like in a coal that almost had gone out, but then it ignited a fire again. Yeah, something like that. I, I don't know how to describe it, but. All I know is this, before the spirit came, I was uh, afraid, uh, and now I'm, I'm full of life and courage. I know, Andy, but you know what the best thing is? What's that, Bart? The best thing is, is that I know that Jesus is with me here, right now. I know, I feel it too. And he's never gonna leave us. Is our God great or what? <laughs> hey, Andy. What, Bart? Did you see all those people? Well, they must have heard the sound of the wind. It, it was so loud. I mean, it must have seemed very strange to them. I mean, we had people from everywhere. There were people from Parthia, Medea, Elam. And Mesopotamia, and Judea, and Cappadocia. Oh, Pontus, and Asia. And Phrygia, and Pamphylia. Egypt, and Libya, and Rome. I guess that's just about everywhere. Yeah, and didn't it feel like the spirit was filling you up like a like a jar just bubbling over with water? Yeah, and it, and it was like just like filling me up, and and where all of a sudden the words just started pouring out of my mouth. I know. I mean, I knew what I was saying, how God loves them, and how Jesus came to save them. But the words coming out of my mouth, they were, they were just so strange. But it was the best feeling, just the greatest feeling, telling them that God loved them, and Jesus came to give them life. It really was. Yeah. Wasn't it funny, though, how people thought we were drinking too much wine? At 9 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. But you know what? It must have sounded crazy to them, because all the words we were speaking were coming out in all those different languages. Oh, and then Peter stood up. Yeah, Peter said, uh, Friends, it's not what you think. We have not had too much wine to drink. No, it is too early to be drinking wine. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he said, it's way too early to be drinking wine. For it was in the Old Testament that Joel foretold that this would happen. In the last days, the Lord would send his spirit to be with all of us. Sons and daughters would tell everyone about me. Young men would have visions and older men would dream dreams. There would be miracles in the sky, wonders across the earth. And just when times would be at their worst, the Lord would come in his glory. For those who called upon him would be saved. Oh, and, th and then he said, um, You have all seen the miracles that Jesus has done with your own eyes. You know that he was sent from God, and you put him to death on the cross. But that was all part of God's plan. God's plan to save us. Yes, but Jesus died, but he didn't stay dead. The grave could not keep him in. This whole time, the Old Testament was talking about Jesus. Yeah, who knew? And, and, and Jesus was with us 
this whole time. And we didn't get it. Because Jesus lives forever, we can all live forever. God raised Jesus from the dead, and now he sits by his Father on the throne, and he's filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit has come down to us. Now we know that Jesus is the Messiah that we've been waiting for this whole time. Oh, you're right, Andy. But remember when the people were saying, what do we do now? Oh, and then Peter said, stop the wrong you are doing and turn to God. Believe that Jesus died for you. Come and be baptized and God will forgive you and give you the gift of the Holy Spirit just as he gave it to us. Did you see how many people were baptized? Have you ever seen so many people? I was there. There was like 3,000. I started counting them, but I, I lost count at 3,000. 3,000 people giving their lives to God in one day. I couldn't believe it. I got so excited, I started to dance. It's okay, Art. I've seen you dance. God is so good. Yes, he is. Oh, what a day. <laughs> what a day. Hey, Andy. What, Bart? What are we going to do tomorrow? I think we'll go tell the world about Jesus. Can we do it now? Isn't that a crazy story? The Holy Spirit came just like Jesus had promised. Now, what did they say it sounded like and what it looked like? Yeah, so the Holy Spirit sounded like the wind, like that whooshing sound. And then it looked like fire, but it wasn't hot or anything like that. It just looked like the fire. And so the Holy Spirit came to the believers and filled them with power. And before the Holy Spirit came, they were afraid and unsure, but the Holy Spirit was there to comfort them. And so that wind and that fire or the Holy Spirit, they felt Jesus's presence and had courage to go out and tell the world about everything they had seen and experienced with Jesus. And so that brings us to our Bible verse for the day. And this is what Jesus told the disciples before he went to heaven. And it's exactly what we heard about today in our story. And so our Bible verse is Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, this power may not seem as cool or as impressive as that super speed, invisibility, teleporting, or anything like that that we talked about earlier. But to the disciples, this was life-changing. Immediately, they left the place they had been hiding from and told everyone they could find, um, they could find out about Jesus' amazing life, death, and resurrection. And the response to this story and to the true story about Jesus was amazing. And people were baptized. And Acts tells us, the book, that 3,000 people believed in Jesus just that first day. Now, this brings us to our big idea today, and it, I'm going to tell you why I think the Holy Spirit's power is just as good as flying, super speed, or any of those awesome superpowers. And our big idea today is the Holy Spirit gives us superpower. Now, I have a list of questions that I guys want you to think about. You don't need to answer out loud. I just want you guys to think about these questions and how you would answer them. So the first question is, is it hard or easy to tell people you believe in Jesus? Is it hard or easy to trust God when you're afraid? Is it hard or easy to share with others? Is it hard or easy to give some of your money to the church? Is it hard or easy to stand up for what's right? Is it hard or easy to put others first instead of thinking about yourself? And last, is it hard or easy to invite friends to church? Now, I know that was a lot of questions, and maybe some of those things were really easy for you, and some of those might have been really hard for you. They might be really hard for you to tell others that you believe in Jesus or to invite others to church. And honestly, some of these are even hard for me. I think they're going to be hard for a lot of people. And there's going to be some easier for others um, 
that might be hard for me. But with the Holy Spirit's help, we can do all of those. We can help people out and teach them about Jesus. The Holy Spirit gives us superpowers to tell others about Jesus and to put them first and to do what's right. Flying would be really cool. Super speed would be really cool. But the superpowers to trust God where I'm afraid, that's an awesome thing to have in my life. And that's an amazing superpower. Now, hopefully you guys can talk more about this, maybe with your parents or with some friends and family, talking about the Holy Spirit and how it gives us power. Now, I'm going to close this out in prayer, and then we're going to wrap up, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. So if you close your eyes and pray with me, thank you, God, for bringing us all here today to just worship you and learn about your gift and the Holy Spirit. No matter how difficult it can be, we can meet virtually to worship you and to just get to know you better and understand the blessings you have given us. I pray that you keep us all safe and healthy. I hope that you strengthen our relationships with you and strengthen just our relationships with the people around us as we might start losing some patience with each other. I just pray that we can love and love you, God, and love others. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. So I hope I see you guys. I hope you guys check in with us next week when we post our next video. I hope you guys stay safe. I hope to see you very, very soon. I miss you guys lots. It is nowhere near as fun being in front of this computer and talking to you guys. I'd rather have your beautiful smiling faces right in front of me. But I hope to see you soon, guys. Bye.